يقول راجع عفو رب سامعي محمد بن الجزري الشافعي الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع محبه وبعد إن هذه مقدمة فيما على قارئه أن يعلمه إذ واجب عليهم محتم قبل الشروع أولا أن يعلموا ما خارج الحروف والصفات ليلفظوا بأفصاح اللغات محرر التجويد والمواقف وما الذي رسم في المصاحف في يلا بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علينا ما ينفعنا ونفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا يا أرحم الراحمين والله في وصفنا في قصر في قصر النار لجدود مرزا من جدود جزء أرحم العالمين We continue by Allah سبحانه وتعالى's blessings in this poem منظومة المقدمة فيما يجب على قارئ القرآن أن يعلمه. And this منظومة as you mentioned المقدمة means the introduction but it doesn't mean this great poem or the greatest poem and most famous poem in the science of Tajweed. It doesn't mean it gives you only an introduction in the science of Tajweed. No. Not at all. Not at all. It gives you the full Almost the full information you need to know in the general Tajweed rules. And two, two of you have carry one of those short, small tables and put it there. Help her. One of you help her move it. It doesn't, it's not only an introduction as we might think. No. It contains, it contains most, if not all, most, if not all, of the rules that you need to know in Tajweed uh, when you recite the Quran. Okay? In Hafs narration. In Hafs narration. So maybe, as I told you, maybe he called it a muqaddimah because it's only about Hafs narration. Even though uh, the main Tajweed rules, they are common in all Qira'at. Let me give you this, uh, this quick note here. And those who are doing the slides, you should include all these notes. Every note that is related to Tajweed in any way, you have to include it. In the previous notes, I have, I have reviewed all the slides so far. Until now, no one is really doing the slides as it should be. And it, mashallah, you're doing good, but you have to do it. You have to, to make your job mutqan. As Rasulullah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Allah Yuhibbu Min Ahadhum Ila Amila Amalan Ayyutqinahu That Allah loves when one of you does do something, when one of you do when one of you does something to perfect it. Do it right. Some of you are uh, mixing a hadith with my words and putting all of them as a hadith. Some of you are skipping like at least like five important points. You have to include, when I say Tajweed from Jawada, Jawada means Hassan, you have to mention this. Because we are explaining this word which is in the verse, right? The word Tajweed. What does Tajweed mean? You have to, to mention Tajweed from Jawada. Jawada means Hassan, means he improved, he did it well, he did it, he, he did it good, etc. So you have to explain all these things. So al Muqaddima. Uh, is the introduction, but doesn't mean it, it, it contains only like little amount of, of knowledge about the Tajweed. No, it, it contains almost all of the needed rules of Tajweed. And all the uh, in Tajweed in general, and all the rules you need to know about Hafs narration, or most of the rules, let's say, because he doesn't mention some of the ways uh, some words are read more than one way in Shatabi way. So he, he mentions almost all of the Tajweed rules. Now, do the Tajweed rules, this is the first time you mentioned this, let's put it as a question and answer. Do all uh, Tajweed rules or are all Tajweed rules common among all the 10 Qira'at of the Holy Quran? Anyone has an idea? The vast majority of the rules, yes, let's say, let's get details. Makharij, all of the Makharij same in all Qira'at. You see guys, there's no Qira'at like like you read uh, scene, 
okay, as a zai, let's say, or as a tha, okay. Makharij al huruf is all the same in all qiraat, but, but, this is now qiraat knowledge, okay, but it's good to know, it's good to know. In some qiraat, we have some letters that we don't have in some qiraat. Anyone can give me an example? Zad. Za. It's not Zad, it is Za. This Za, they call it Asad al Mushamma Zayan. Asad that have the smell of the Zay. Za. So when someone reads Wala Zalin, instead of Dalin, we say this, this cannot be a replacement for the Za. This can be a replacement for the Sad in certain Qiraat, but can never be a replacement for the Za for the Za in Qiraat. You understand? So like uh, in Hamza's Qira'ah, he says, Ihdina Zirata, for example. Zi, okay? Zi. So that is called Sal Mushamma Zayan. What else? Is there any other letter other than this? I, I cannot recall any other letter. That's the only letter that uh, doesn't exist in house. So, Makhar and Huruf all the same. They don't change. Here the Sal did not change, huh? And, and not every sad he changed it to the za, okay? Not every sad, no, 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 no. In some words, okay? In some words. So, makhar and khuruf are the same. Sifat and khuruf are the same, okay? But now here we have in warsh some ra'at that are heavy, he makes them light, so he has his own rules. But let's say the lamb, same thing, the lamb. Hafs makes some lamb at heavy, some lamb at heavy. So you can see there are some exceptions here and there, but the main rules, the main tajweed rules, that all the maharaj, all the sifat are the same among all qira'at. And since he mentioned all of them in his poem, so it's not an introduction, it's not an introduction in the meaning that it's, it only includes little amount of knowledge. No, it contains all the knowledge. What about the rules of nun sakina and tanween and mean sakina? They are all the same in all qira'at except uh, what's his name? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. This is when you stop reviewing. Uh, one of the ten qurra, he makes ikhfa, he makes idram, idram with ghunna for the lamb and the ra. idram with ghunna. And he also makes, uh, he makes ikhfa for the noon and the kha, for example. So little differences, you understand? But the majority of the rules are the same. So from all this we can understand that Muqaddima has or contains almost all of the Tajweed rules that are needed, especially in Hafs narration. We can put it this way, inshallah. So we are in line 28. In line 28, the Mudud almost the same, almost, not all of them, almost the same. Okay, the mudud, almost the same. For example, Madd al Muttasil, all the Qur'an make it four, but Warsh and Hamza, they make it six. So there are little differences you see in some rules, but the Madd al let's say all Qur'an, definitely two. Okay, so in some rules, there are some exceptions, but the general rules, all the Qur'an agree on. This, and this makes it easy for those guys of you who, who might think to continue the Qira'at. And that's something good and not something difficult. And something very, very nice. It's, it's not easy, but it's very nice. And it's a man, it's communal obligation on the Muslims to keep these Qira'at because they are all Qur'an. And they benefit us in the tafsir and they benefit us also in teaching. Right? If one of you uh, ends up in uh, Morocco, you have to learn Warsh so that you teach the Warsh. They're not gonna learn hafs from you. They want to read Warsh, they keep Warsh, okay? Why? Because Warsh is read. His narration is also Quran, just like hafs. Even some scholars, they said, you cannot say this qira'ah is better. You cannot, because both of them received from the Prophet ﷺ, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot say this uh, hafs is better because it's more common. Astaghfirullah, you cannot say that, right? Because all mutawatir, as you will see, inshallah today. So what is the line we stopped at? Or let's let's review the first line the first line because I have some quick notes to add. 
والاخذ بالتجويد حتم لازم من لم يصحح القران اثم من لم يصحح القران اثم so we said the one who does not improve his recitation and correct his recitation of the quran by by what giving the letters their maharij or pronouncing the letters from their right maharij and giving the letters their right sifat and applying the resulting rules the resulting rules of connecting the letters and connecting the words the one who doesn't that is a sin doesn't do that is a sin and we, that is the general meaning right what we said in he is a sinner in case of what in case of in case he uh, in, in the case in which he changes the meaning right any mistake that it changes the meaning how do you change the meaning changing a makhraj of the letter and instead of kassarakum you say kassarakum kassar shaytan kassar means to break right and instead of uh, uh, an'amta he says an'amtu astaghfirullah so either changing the haraka which means the i'rab or changing the letter that changes the meaning and sometimes changing the the sifa sometimes changing the sifa when you say ta like attala instead of attala you did not change the makhraj in reality you change what you change the sifa when you the ta and the ta have the same makhraj when you make the ta heavy it becomes ta you change the meaning and this is why we, when we explain the details, we said every Muslim must learn the Bukharij and the Sifat that it changed the letter. These are the two main things that every Muslim should learn and must learn. The Bukharij of the letters and the Sifat that it changed the letter, not the decorative Sifat, not the ornamental Sifat. Okay? Of course, is very encouraged and, and urged to learn all all attributes but what is the, the the haram area is when you skip when you change the makhraj of the letter or what or you change the sifat that it changes the letter into another letter or you change the haraka means the haram now well akhdu bi tajweedi hatmul lazim no one the one who did the slides review and add add to them I did not see the one who did this line uh, writing the literal meaning. Every line you do in your class, you have to, in your slides, you have to put the literal meaning. So, al akhdu bit tajweed means of implementing tajweed. So, uh, you put the Arabic line like here, like this one. You copy it from the from the file I shared with you. You copy this. You paste it on the slide, and under it you say, for example. Uh, what did you say? Well, akhdu, you say al akhdu bit tajweed means implementing tajweed. So you understand. This way you learn Arabic, you learn what this line literally means, and then you learn the explanation. Okay? That's how you learn the poems, and that's how you learn these sciences. Well, akhdu bit tajweed means what? Implementing tajweed. Hatmun means necessary. Lazimu, mandatory. So what, why he said hatmun lazimu? Uh, for emphasis. Okay, he repeated, he used another word, both of them the same meaning almost, almost, but he repeated and he added another word for emphasis and to complete the line, right? So he added that or put those two words for emphasis. Now, مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ We explained about that, that there are two narrations for this line and we explained that in detail. And why he said Al-Qur'ana, not Al-Qur'ana? Hmm? Why he said Al-Qur'an? Al -Qur'ana. Come on guys, come on. Wake up. What's the time? It's 10.30. Why he didn't say Al-Qur'an? To keep the rhythm of the line, right? And we explained this in one of the classes before. This is this manzuma is from Bahr al-Rajaz. One of these poetic meters, right? They call them meters, poetic meters. And it has six times mustaf'ayun. Mustafilun, 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 Mustafilun. So every two or one or, or every group of letters, they should be in this in this form, in this scale. Well, أَخْذُ بِالْتَجْوِيدِ حَتْمُ الْلَّازِمُ مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّ الْقُرَانَ آثِمُ مُسْتَفْعِلٌ 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 All of them should fall in the same form. If he said, مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّ 
he hil Qur'an na athimu, it doesn't work. But lam yusah, he hil Qur'an na athimu, so, so that it fits, he used, he said al Quran. Now, is it correct to say al Quran? Of course it is. So he did not only do it for the rhyme and change the word, no. Because in one of the qira'at, which qira'at is that I mentioned to you last time? Who remembers? Ibn Kathir. Not the Mufassir, the one who has the, common, the, the famous commentary of the Quran. No, that's a different one. Ibn Kathir, the Qari, not the Mufassir, okay? He's one of the ten Qurra, Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir, radiallahu anhu, one of the ten Qurra, he says, Quran, the word Quran, everywhere in the Quran, whether it's by itself or with a pronoun, he read it with Naql, or Naql, Harakat al Hamza ila Sakin qabla. Moving the harak of the Hamza to the second letter before it. So he says, Qurana, for example. Fattabi' Qurana. He says, Wal Quran al Adim, for example. Wal Quran al Hakim. Tamam? Inna nahnu nazzalna al Qurana tanzila. Everywhere in the Quran, this is how he reads it. Where did he get it from? Where did he get it from? Not from his, his father's house, right? From who? From his sheikhs. Who got it from their sheikhs? From their sheikhs? From the Prophet. I'd like to share with you uh, what Imam Shatmi said in his poem in Shatmiya to tell us about this, this rule. He says, very nice poem, I want to, to share with you to see how Imam Shatmi, uh, how he mentioned these rules. He says, وَنَقْلُ وَنَقْلُ قُرَانٍ والقرآن دواؤنا Then what does he say? وفي تكمله وفي تكمله قل لشعبة الميم ثقلة Right? وفي تكمل قل شعبة الميم ثقل وهي لشعبة شعبة قل شعبة الميم ثقل. Look guys, this rule we mentioned it before many times because Imam Al-Jazal used it many times before. If you remember, right? Where does he use it? يقول راجع في رب سامي محمد بن زر شاهد الحمد لله صلى الله عليه وسلم ومقري القرآن مع محبي. Right? ومقري القرآن مع محبي. He mentioned it in the beginning. He mentioned it many times before. If you remember. What does what what is this rule? This is the word al or al hasn shaba not shaba. What's his name? Wash. Wash does this a lot, but not in this word. Wash, for example, he doesn't say qul a'udhu. What does he say? Ya Sheikh Nabi, what does he say? Huh? No, you know. You don't know. Well, what does he say? Isa. What does Warsh, how do, who knows how Warsh reads this? Qul a'udhu, how he reads it? How, he, how, huh? Does he make it one word? How? I don't know. We mentioned this many times. He says, Qul a'udhu, Qul Qul a'udhu. What does he do? Look what he does. This is called moving the haraka of the hamza to the second letter before it. So what happens here? Qul Qul a'udhu bi rabbi al-falaq Qul Qul a'udhu Understand? Qul a'udhu In this word, the word al-Quran, only Ibn Kathir Only Ibn Kathir With his two narrators Qulbul and Dazzi Radiallahu anhu He does this. What does he do? Change, change the fatha, uh, move the haraka of the hamza to the second before it. How does it become? Or a ura. Cut it? Yes. What, is, what do you call this? Moving the haraka of the hamza to the second letter before it. Mashi. Now look, Imam Shatubi, in his Shatubi, how many qiraat he explains? Seven. 
seven qiraat. Then Imam ibn al-Jazari came and his durra, about 300 verses, shall be about 1,000. Then Imam ibn al-Jazari in his durra, how many qiraat he explained? Three. So these ten are called the minor ten qiraat, al-ashr sumra. Then these are ten qiraat, mutawatir, all mutawatir, they are all Qur'an. Then Imam ibn al-Jazari came again and he brought those ten qurra, those ten qurra, he brought for them more narrations, more asaneed from the Prophet ﷺ to those qurra, to his sheikhs. And the scholars, they call these ten qurra that Imam ibn al-Jazari collected, what do they call them? Al-Ashr al-Kubra, the major ten qurra, because they have more chains and more variations. So we have al-Ashr al-Subra and al-Ashr al-Kubra. No more. These are the only mutawatir qiraat. Okay, for example, example, Hafs, the way that we are learning and most Muslims read is what? Hafs through which way? Shatniya. Do you understand? Now Hafs through Tayyibah, that the, the major term they are called Tayyibah because the poem that Imam al Jazeera wrote is called Tayyibah al Nashr fi al Qiraat al Ashr. In the Tayyibah way, for example, Hafs has many other narrations. Many, not one, many ways. One of those ways in Tayyibah for Hafs, in one of them, he makes the man Munfasil, which is how many in, in how long in, in Shatniya? Four or five in Shatniya. In one of those Tayyib ways, he makes it how many, Ya Two, right? That's what you read in Taraweeh, right? So we read Al-Mufasil, two harakat. Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu. Ya ayyuha. Right? So, and there will be some little differences in some words. Like Basta. That's of your example, he says Basta. Okay? In Arab, right? Okay. So here, Imam al-Shatwi, how many qiraat he mentions here in, in Shatwi? Seven. Now, the amazing way he put it, he gave a symbol for every qari, a letter. For example, the first qari is Nafi. He gave him the Hamza. The second is Warsh, who is uh, not Warsh, Qalun, who is one of of the narrators of Nafi, he gives him the Ba. Then Wash has the Jeen. Then he starts with Ibn Kathir. So he starts with Al Madina, Qari Al Madina, Nafi. He, he, he was in Al Madina Al Murawar. Then he goes to Mecca, Ibn Kathir Al Makki, he was in Mecca. So Ibn Kathir, what will the symbol of, of Ibn Kathir be? Which letter? Me. Alif, Ba. You're going to say Ta? No. Because the order of the letters, the order of the letters that we know, Alif, Ba, Ta, Ta, Jim, Ha, that is not the original order. The original order is Abaj, Abaj, Abjad, Abjad, How was Hutti, Kalamu. It has a different order. I, do, I forgot if you mentioned it in the first course. So the order is Abjad, How was. Abjad, How was. This is why you say Abjadiya. Anyway, the symbol for Ibn Kathir is the Dal. Is the Dal. So look what he says now. وَنَقْلُ وَنَقْلُ قُرَانٍ نَقْل نَقْل means moving. قُرَانٍ means the moving of the Hamza in the word Quran. قُرَانِ وَالْقُرَانِ Not only Quran, Quran also Al-Quran. Whether it has, it doesn't have Al or it has Al. وَنَقْلُ قُرَانٍ وَالْقُرَانِ قُرَانٍ وَالْقُرَانِ دَوَاؤُنَا where is Ibn Kathir? So from this word, from the Dal, he's telling you, who reads these two words with Naql? Who? Ibn Kathir. And look at this, at the, the amazing word he chose here. He says, and the Quran is our cure, is our medicine. So he gives you an amazing meaning, and he puts the rule for you, and he tells you who reads it that way. These are these are geniuses. They, they say geniuses, they make plural for this word. Geniuses, these are the geniuses of Islam. How many, how many like ayat he made this way? The entire Quran. Any word that has differences in the Quran he included. 
hit in his poem about a thousand verses in this amazing way. This way, you know that only Ibn Kathir he read this word this way. All the nine other Qur'an, they read it, read it normally. So he, he has like about 25 verses in the beginning just to tell you how to deal with the poem. I studied almost 200 verses of, that, of this poem and still continue. So, وَنَقْلُ قُرَانٍ وَالْقُرَانِ دَوَاؤُنَا Now he says here, give you one more example. This is the last time I, I give you, I talk to you about this. So now you know what Shatiyah is about. You know, you know, you taste a little bit of the sweetness of, of, of this science of Qiraat. وَنَقْلُ قُرَانٍ وَالْقُرَانِ دَوَاؤُنَا And the Qur'an is our cure, is our medicine. Then he says, وَفِي تُكْمِلُوا قُلْ شُعْبَةَ الْمِيمَ ثَقَّلَ وَفِي تُكْمِلُوا In the word تُكْمِلُوا He's talking here about the Surah Al-Baqarah وَفِي تُكْمِلُوا قُلْ Say شُعْبَةَ Sometimes he doesn't give you that symbol He mentions the name right away of the Qarif Like here He says قُلْ شُعْبَةَ الْمِيمَ ثَقَّلَ شُعْبَةَ Main shadda for the meme in the word تُكْمِلُوا Who can tell me what does that mean? How does he read it? Yalla, what's Shadda for the mean? Tell me how Shadda reads this word. In Hass, what do you read it? When he took Kmilu al Iddata. So, Shadda, what? How would Shadda read it? Put Shadda on the mean. Yes? See it? See it? To Kmilu, right? When he took Kmilu al Iddata. You understand? So he only should read it this way. It means the rest of the Quran read it no more. Took me. Okay. So that is only an example how how these great Quran and these great scholars pass the Quran. You see how how can the Quran be lost? Now not only with the, with this verse or this poem. There are many other poems and many scholars explained it. And in addition to that, we have. Hundreds of thousands of people learning the practical or, or the, the, the implementing these these ways, reading them and transferring them generation after generation. How can this Quran be lost? How can even a single letter be lost? It can never, right? As long as there are people like you, mashallah, you're memorizing, but we need people also to also aspire to learn those other qiraat. That help, that benefits not only just as another way of reading, and sometimes nice way you enjoy it, like you like it. Oh, I like what I like to read. Watch. Okay, nice. Sometimes, but also it's what it helps and benefits in the seeing. Okay. Sometimes some people they find it difficult to read with Hamza. So if you're if you're knowledgeable enough, you can teach them watch, for example, because he drops most of the Hamza. Okay, or. Or, uh, what's his name? Abu Amr, in one of his narrations. So, for example, what says the Mu'minun, right? Like here, Ula'udhu, the Mu'minun, Bilakhira, right? Bilakhira, right? So, there is ease, alhamdulillah, in this. Last time we, or let's continue the second line now, line 28, the end now, مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ آثِمُ We're done with that. Now, 28. لِأَنَّهُ What does that mean? We explained this last time. Yalla guys. We're repeating a lot, huh? لِأَنَّهُ means what? Because the matter is لِأَنَّهُ They say this is The ha is ضَمِيرُ الشَّأْنِ ضَمِيرُ الشَّأْنِ means لِأَنَّ الْأَمْرَ لِأَنَّ الشَّأْنَ Because the matter is The matter is بِهِ B means what? Those who, 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 who were supposed to do the slides for this, you should explain it. I didn't find it in the slides. I'm, I'm grading you. I'm going to grade you now. I'm, I'm giving you a chance to correct and regrade you. But next, in the next section, inshallah, you, I'm going to grade you right away. Once you're done, I'm going to grade you. Then, I'm, then you have to correct, but the grade will not change. Okay? Because you have to do it right. So, bihi means what? لِأَنَّهُ bihi. Who, who was your raise your hand? Who was your last, last class? Raise your hand. 
The B you write? B means what? <coughs> with it. With what? With what ya ammo? With tajweed. Because the matter is with it al ilah the God. Al ilah anzala. Because with it means with tajweed. God revealed it or sent it down. Why is it anzala? It's not this alif of the dual. Remember, you have alif of the dual, wow of the plural, non of the woman. What do we have? Alif of the dual, wow of the yashir, wow of what? Plural. And we have, we have noon of the women. Okay, noon of the women. وَقَطَّعْنَا أَيْدِيَهُنَّ Right? أَسْكِنُوهُنَّ Right? Okay. So, no, أَسْكِنُوهُنَّ is not. أَسْكِنُوهُنَّ That's noon, noon of the emphasis. قُلْنَا قُلْنَا حَاشَ لِلَّهِ Right? لُمْتُنَّ نِيْفِي Right? قَطَّعْنَا أَيْدِيَهُنَّ Okay? قَطَّعْنَا Okay, so remember, alif, alif al ithnayn, alif of the dual. Wow, al jama'a, wow of the plural. Noon al niswa, noon of the women. Now, is this noon of the dual? Anzala, bi anna ubi al ilahu anzala? Of course not, because Allah is one, not two, not three, not three in one, not two in one, one and only one. No parts, no partners. Remember this word. No parts, no partners. Allah mentions this in the Quran. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدًا means no parts. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ means no partner. This is mentioned two times in the Quran. وَلَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدًا وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ means no parts, no partner. لِأَنَّهُ بِهِ الْإِلَاهُ أَنْزَلَى So what is this alif ya sister? Last sister there. What is the alif? What do you call this alif? Alif ul? Huh? You said it many times. You should get like a stick or something that I can reach you. Alif what? Alif ul iqlaq. Alif ul iqlaq. Because it cannot be al ilah is one. God is one, right? Okay. لأنه به الإله أنزل This is ألف الإطلاق means I call it I translate it this way I say ألف of release why because we release the فتحة means we stretched it into an ألف why to keep the rhythm so that's okay in poetry to keep the rhythm does that make sense okay لأنه به الإله أنزل now if someone say ask you and says ah you're saying your God is one but God says we, he uses the pronoun we in the Quran. So it means he's a company of God. What do you answer? This silly question. This question that shows ignorance. Huh? It's the royal we. Or the majestic plural. They call it the majestic plural. What do they call it? Majestic plural. Or the royal we. When kings talk, one, he, the king is one, he says, we made a command to glorify himself. Okay, back here. Even in English they use this. Okay. Wahakada. Wahakada. Hakada means what? Hakada means what? In one word. Thus. Hakada means what? Thus means thus means and in this way, thus means what? In this way, min who? From min who means what? From him. From who? From who? Don't be afraid. I'm not gonna. Say it. I said from us. No. From him. Min who means from him. From who? From Allah. Min who? From Allah. Ilayna. Ilayna means what? To us, and thus from him to us, and thus means in this way, from him, from Allah to us, wa 
Allah arrived or reached. So what does the word ya Sheikh, ya sister or ya brother, the word does here or in this way? In what way? And in this way it reached us from it reached to us from him. In what way? In what way? What does he mean? And in this way, or he means when he says thus, in what way he means? In Tajweed. Yes, please say it aloud, don't be afraid. So that I may I I I have some relief that there is someone who's understanding. So wasala arrived, right? Arrived or reached. So here we would use the word reached, right? But when we say wasala وصل الشيخ the sheikh has arrived okay so وهكذا من هو إلينا وصل any question about any word in this line before we move on did you all right okay لأنه به الإله وأنزل وهكذا من هو إلينا وصل okay that was line twenty eight يلا who can remind me what is the last thing we stopped at last time what is the thing we stopped at Hmm. Where did we start last time? What is the last thing you wrote, Yashir? Uh, uh. We said now we're gonna talk how we're gonna explain this sentence. And thus means in this way, means in Tajweed, it reached us or it came to us from him. This is what we have to explain. How this Quran reached us from Him Subhanahu wa Taala with Tajweed. That is a, a huge, huge, huge topic that every single one of you must know. You must know this. You must know how the Quran reached us. How this Quran ar arrived here. How do you know it did not change? How do you know? When Jehovah's Witnesses knock on, on your door and you, you, you say I'm busy or, I, or you don't open the door for them or whatever. When you learn this topic, you will open to them and tell them come and invite them again. Okay. To show them. Because the, this is unique only to the Quran. This is only unique to the Quran. This is unique only to the Quran. I had a a Christian brother the other day, I received him in my house. I told him, show me one single verse about Trinity in the Bible. One single verse. He didn't know. I told him, open 1 John chapter 7, verse 4. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. And he read it. And I gave him another Bible. I told him, find it for me, please, here. And then I gave him a third Bible from England. One from America, one from America. Then I gave him a Spanish Bible. I see, see, it's not there. I gave him King James Version. It's there. So I told him, how do you explain this? This verse, the only verse about Trinity in the Bible, they, it was added. This is the, the Christian scholars talking, not Muslim scholars. They're saying, it was added, it is not in any of the Greek manuscripts before the 14th century. Imagine, more than 1,300 years after Jesus, peace be upon him, they added this verse. Then still, they say this is the word of God. So, why you have to know this? Why is it good to know this? Because when you learn about the Quran, you will see that there is no comparison. So how did the Quran meet us? We said there are two ways. Who can remember and remind us? There are two ways to prove the Quran. The first way you start from the Quran itself. And the second way you start from the source of the Quran. From the history of the Quran. The first way, we, this is a quick summary. You look at this Quran. Right? This is where we stopped at Ya Sheikh when we talk about the mountains. and Right? The first way, Ya Sheikh, is what? You look at this Qur'an, read it. You will find that it's amazing. You will find that it's not only matching scientific facts, but it foretold scientific facts that have just been discovered. Just 
been discovered. I just I, I watched yesterday a, a, a lecture by the Canadian embryologist Keith Moore. First time I watched, I know what he said, but this time I watched it myself in Illinois in 1990. He gives this lecture. So he says it's it, it's impossible that Muhammad will know these things that we just in these recent decades we came to know. So it must be from God. And and they asked him, he said, yes, Muhammad is a messenger of God like Jesus. As Jesus is a messenger. This is what he said. He said, yeah. This means Muhammad is a messenger of God just as Jesus is a messenger. This is his word. So like this, there are so many verses about the mountains, about the oceans, about 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 iron, about the embryo, about uh, the moon, the planets, the universe, the the Big Bang, if you like, all the facts. Are we talking about facts? You will find it there. You will never be able to find a single contradiction to any scientific facts or any logical or rational rule. So when you study this book and you find these things, you will know it's from the Creator. So this is, it's called, this is the direct way. Now the other way that we are going to focus on here is what? By studying the history of the Quran, we want to see how it came to us. And when we study how it came to us from Allah, the Creator, to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and from Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to us, then we can know that it never, never, never changed. And we can know also that this cannot be from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu It must be from the Creator. Is that clear, guys? So how many ways we have to prove the Quran? How many ways? Two, right? So let's start. We're going to start from the Prophet sallallahu to us. But that will not be enough, right? Because if you prove that the Quran is exactly the same way that we recite, is the exact same one that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu recited, is that enough to prove that it's from Allah? What, what should you do then? What should you prove? You need then to prove, after you prove, focus with me. Is, am I speaking like difficult words? After you prove that the Quran that we recite today is the exact same one that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam recited 1400 years ago, after you prove that, you have not proved that it's from Allah. What do you have to prove? You have to prove that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a prophet, and he could never ever bring it from his own mind, nor could he bring it from someone else. You understand? So in that case, we have to study the issue of what? Of wahi, the revelation. How the revelation came to him. What is the revelation? How it happened, etc. So we can study this after, after we study this step, which is how the Quran from him to us. We said, we said, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to worship in the and I already gave you some proofs about the first step, right? I already told you his his own people they acknowledge he was trustworthy, they acknowledge he was honest, they know his life 40 years, they know where he went, what he did, and they know every detail about his life, right? Because they were a small community. They know uh, that he went to Sham for a, a trade sometime and they know uh, who he met, etc. They know everything. And this is why when some of the foolish pagans, they said, ah, oh, the Bahira, the, mon the, the monk, they say the monk, right? The monk who, who lives in the monastery, right? They say, Bahira Rahim, Bahira Rahim, the monk that he met in Sham when he was going with his uncle or whoever, he taught him the Quran. He met that monk like for 10 minutes. He met him like for 10 minutes. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one single ayah refutes their foolish claim. In Surah Al-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? 
We know that they're claiming that a man taught him. And Allah said what? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one sentence. Right? The, per the, the language of the person, the language of the person they're talking about is what? Is non Arab, right? Is non Arab. Isan al ladi yulhiduna ilayhi. أعجمي. While this is لسان عربي مبين. This is a manifest Arabic Quran. Full stop. You're just silent, right? How can how can this amazing eloquent Arabic Quran can be taught by someone who doesn't even know Arabic, right? So you can see how. Look at this amazing ayah, guys. Just to see, Quran is about logic. Quran teaches you to use logic. Very simple argument. Well, you were saying uh, he's a, he, that person taught him, well, he doesn't even speak Arabic. I mentioned in the khutbah yesterday that I watched a video by someone asking one of the big popes in Egypt. The lady asked, she, they are like our school, okay, but bigger. And these are like the teachers, let's say, and they're meeting with their big uh, grand pope, okay? It's different from the Catholic pope. For the cooks, they, they have their own pope. She asked him, SubhanAllah. She asked him, my, my, my son asked me how uh, Jesus, Jesus, is eternal as a man and God is eternal as a father she, he, she's telling him my son asked me he's, he's asking an innocent question and he's telling me how Jesus is the man is eternal and he was born of Mary and the mother is saying and I, 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 I felt that this is, a, this is a good question. Go and just watch the video. I, I hope you know some Arabic and see how, how the Pope is saying, uh, what a miracle boy you have. He's like uh, mocking. How, how would you get this, this boy? He, he said, he, he got confused and, and then you know what he told her? He didn't. He didn't answer. He didn't give an answer. He said he he, he was always um, he was always uh, he's eternal. He's eternal. She said him how he he was born from Mary, right? And how you say he's eternal? So you know what he told her. Look what he told her. This is the this is the point. This child of yours maybe he, it seems if he's asking such questions, it seems he's gonna deviate and go to philosophy and logic and that will ruin his faith. So you should be careful. Means what? Means like this. Just follow us like this, okay? Just follow like this. Don't use it. Rent it. This is how they do, right? And our job is to help them that brothers and sisters everywhere in this world Brothers, God gave you this mind, use it. Use it. Or lose it. If you don't use it, you will lose it. Yes, if you don't use it, you will lose it. You will become just like. And the Quran in so many ayat rebukes the pagans because they're just following their forefathers. Right? SubhanAllah. Look how the Quran is teaching us and look how people teaching, teaching their followers. May Allah guide them. And may Allah help us to guide them. And may Allah increase us of knowledge and wisdom to guide them. Anyway. That is one example of how you can prove that the Prophet ﷺ was honest and truthful. We have more uh, proofs. We will talk about the issue of Al-Wahi or Dahir Al-Wahi as we study this in Aqeedah because you have to prove it and talk about it and explain Al-Wahi and to prove that it's not something like hallucination as some 
so-called scholars mentioned, non-Muslim. They say this is just, it's like from jinn or just from something. So we have to talk about it and explain it and, and explain some brief proofs, inshallah, for it. We're going to explain this in Aqidah maybe after one year, Allah knows, but we're going to mention this briefly next time, inshallah. But let's go now in the remaining 10 minutes to, uh, to start how it started. We said he started in the cave of Hira. In how many years the Quran was revealed? 23 years. Well, how Allah says, Inna anzalna fi laylat al-qadr. I'm repeating how, until now, I did not say anything new. From last time, right? I will almost summarize all the last three lectures. How Allah says, Inna anzalna, we sent it in laylat al-qadr. We know for a fact that it was revealed over how many years? Huh? How many years? 23 years, right? What does that mean? Yalla ya shaykh. Ya shaykh and ya shaykha. What does that mean? I mentioned this last time, come on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, this is the most adopted opinion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran from the sacred tablet to the house of glory, some, a place called the house of glory in the lower heaven. Allah revealed it in one time, there in Laylatul Qadr. It was good there. Then Sayyidina Jibreel will take it to the Prophet sallallahu part by part, over how many years? 23 years. You got it? Another, there are other opinions, okay? I'll give you just, just to, to keep in mind that this, this is also an opinion that the scholars mentioned. That every night of Qadr, Look at this nice opinion, huh? It's nice. It's possible, okay? It's possible. The first opinion is not like like uh, Quran. You mean what? You, you know what I mean? It's not like believe. Like you have to believe it this way. No. This is interpretation of the Quran. Could be this. Could be as one of the scholars mentioned. I think Muqatil, one of the early commentators of the Quran, he says, every night of Qadr, every year. And those 23 years, Allah will reveal from, reveal from the sacred tablet the verses that will be given in that year. And it will be revealed to Baytul Azza then to the Prophet according to the occasions. That's nice also, right? And this, this gives like layers of Qadr continuous. Well, I, I incline to this opinion. It's, it's more like it gives layers of Qadr like a continuous. But it's, it's, uh, let's stick to the majority opinion, okay, why, because uh, if we say that, then we say, okay, now the Layl al Qadr has no value because it's not being revealed now, no. So, that because the, that night, because on that occasion or on that point of time, the Quran was revealed, خلاص. this point of time is blessed until the end of time. You understand? So, the Prophet ﷺ received the first, uh, and this is what I like to, to mention another ayah that we did not mention last time. Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? وَقُرْآنًا You have to know this ayah guys. These two ayahs you have to know them. We mentioned وَرَتَّلْنَاهُ تَوْتِيلًا We explained that one. And the other, the other one وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا نَزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا the disbelievers they say, why did not the Quran was why wasn't the Quran revealed to him just in bulk as one one book? And Allah replied to them what? Huh? We did so so that we strengthen your heart with it. We sent it part by part. Part by part. And we explained in details last time. That this was of the main reasons that helped Muslims memorize and learn the Quran very well. Because it was revealed over 23 years according to the occasions. And they were very connected to the Quran because they were waiting for the answers. Because the Quran came either an answer to a question or a solution to a problem they fell in. Or guidance. So they were connected with the Quran. Every time some verses are revealed, they are very connected to it and they learn it and memorize it and teach it and write it down, etc. etc. So it became part of their lives. That is one of the main reasons that they memorized it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with this. And this ayah, the other ayah I want to mention is Surah Isra. 
وَقُرْآنًا قُرْآنًا How does Ibn Kathir read this word? Quran. وَقُرْآنًا فَرَطْنَاهُ فَرَطْنَاهُ We sent it part by part. Why? لِتَقْرَأَهُ عَلَى النَّاسِ عَلَى مُكْرِ So that you read it to people slowly, part by part. Then we said, وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنْزِيلًا And we sent it, and we, we explained, we sent it part by part. We explained it, and we clarified it. And the wisdom behind this is that it's Words, this is what Imam al Ashur says, very nice sentence. Its words and meanings will be more fixed in the hearts of the listeners. That's what we mentioned, right? In this way, the words of the Quran and the meanings of the Quran were very inherent, very, very fixed, very deeply rooted in the hearts and the minds of those great Sahaba. This is why we say when we have a confirmed, confirmed report about an explanation of the Qur'an from Sahaba, you have to take it. You have to take it because they lived it, they knew it, they... Right? So, first five ayat were revealed, Surah Iqra, right? Surah Al-Alaq. What would Rasulullah do? Whenever a group of those verses are revealed, what does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa do? What does he do? Yalla guys, this is now the first step. Now he's receiving, okay? We're gonna talk inshallah next time how he was receiving. What, what happens to him? Like, does he lose his consciousness for example? Or when he's sleeping he wakes up and he says, I got these verses. How that happened? That phenomenon of al-wahi or the revelation. What happens to him? How does it sound? How? This is in Bukhari, there is the first book in Bukhari, Kitab Bad al The first book, it talks about this. The beginning of the revelation to the Prophet It mentions how it came to him and how he feels it and etc. etc. We're going to talk about that. That's, uh, and then we're going to mention some extra proofs, how we prove that it must be from Allah and how the Prophet was truthful. So let's keep that for a moment. And let's start. Now he received these verses. What does he do? What does he do? Huh? He memorizes it. Good job. He tries to memorize it. Right? That's the first step, guys. Look what he would do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Step you're looking there, it's not there. Is it still there? Oh, I took the charger. I thought I took the, the cable. Okay, now. Now look. I took the, I thought I took the cable off. Okay. Look here, there are no, nothing there. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What would he do? And this is in Bukhari, and this is in the Quran. He will start, the wahi is coming down now to him. He is hearing the ayat, or the ayat are coming in, he's feeling them, hearing them inside. And he starts, before the angel finished, he started repeating. Start repeating quickly. Why? So he, 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 he was afraid to forget it. That is the Sunnah, guys. You want to memorize the Quran? Do like him. The first time he would receive it, he, he was receiving it. Before it ended, started repeating, repeating, and quick, quick. And Sayyidina Abdullah Ras, he mentions in the hadith in Bukhari, he's like moving his lips. Quick, quick, what does Allah say? Allah revealed some verses to him. Who knows those verses? Excellent, Barakallah. لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به Don't move your tongue quickly with it so that you're hasty to get it or you're afraid to lose it or إن علينا جمعه وقرآنه How does it continue in this word? Quran. It is on us. See, look at this. Look how Allah chose here to use the plural, the majestic plural. It means it's something great. It is on us to compile it for you and to read it for you. Inna alayna jam'ahu wa Qur'ana. Fa'idha qaratnahu fattabi' Qur'ana. 
And when we read it to you, who's reading it to him? Who's reading it to him? Sayyidina Jibreel. But Allah is saying, when we read it to you, so you understand that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers the verb to himself even though the one who does the verb is not himself, is one of his angels or messengers. When Allah says, Inna nahnu nuhyi wa numit, We are the ones who gives life and death. Who, takes the, who causes the death or who takes the soul? Is it Allah or the angel? It is Allah through the angel. <coughs> right? When Allah says, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيمِ We are closer to him than the jugular vein. Who are, who are closer to him? Allah, Allah moves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond place and time and movement. Allah is beyond place and time and movement and, and body and, right? So who is closer to him? The angel of death, right? Right? وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ But you cannot see. You cannot see the angel. So you have to keep this in mind, okay? This is used in Arabic language, okay? So when, when, uh, when Allah says, وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ In the Quran, that your Lord came. If you're, you just read any translation, it says your Lord came. Well, the meaning is that the command of your Lord came. The judgment started. This is what it means. This is called majaz in the Quran. This is metaphorical and figurative speech. So here, Allah says, فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ When we read it, means who? When Sayyidina Jibreel read it to you by our command, فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ What do you do? فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَ Follow its Qur'an, means its Qira'ah. The word Qur'an we mentioned before, right? In the beginning of Jazariya, Qur'an means Qira'ah. One of the meaning. Qur'an means reading. So, فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ When we read it, Follow its reading. فاتبع قرآنه. Not follow its Quran. Follow its reading. And that is the key word, guys, that we're going to mention a lot and a lot. That قراءة is اتباع, not ابتداء. This is from the Quran. Allah is telling him, when we read it, you just follow its reading. Just wait and just follow and listen. Now he's getting, this is called talaqi. What is it called? Talaqi. Now he's receiving the Quran. Receiving the Quran. Did he read it from a book? No. He heard it. And this is how we receive the Quran and learn it. It's not from the book. There was no book. There was no book in the beginning. It was not even compiled. This is the main reliance of the Muslims is the oral transmission and this is how it starts from the master of the creatures and the most beloved one of the creator when we read it follow its reading and look at the amazing blessing that he got even more than that what's the next ayah then it is on us to clarify it for you and explain it to you. So the Sunnah came to explain the Holy Quran. One amazing set of ayat that show you the beginning and show you the method and show you the way. Getting the Quran is by ittiba, means what? By following those who got the Quran from those who got the Quran, from those who got the Quran, from the Prophet وسلم, who got it from Sayyidina Jibreel وسلم, who got it from Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Inshallah we will continue from there. So Rasulullah وسلم, right away he's teaching us, repeat. Allah guaranteed for him guys, don't, I afraid some of you, they don't review, they're thinking this ayah applies to them. Huh? <laughs> this ayah doesn't apply to you, huh? You have to repeat. You have to keep repeating, repeating. Allah guaranteed that for the Prophet ﷺ that he would put it in his heart. Right? As in the, in, in the last, as in uh, Surah uh, Shu'ara, right? What's the ayah? Ala qalbika yitakuna min al What's the beginning of the ayah? 
نزل به الروح الامين رايت نزل به الروح الامين على قلبك لتكون من المنذرين the, the trustworthy angel in Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam means the Holy Spirit came, brought it into your heart Allah put it in his heart so he will not forget سَنُقْرِئُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى he will not forget oh, Allah told him don't worry, don't worry don't bother yourself, just listen, just listen and it will be here Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam everyone wishes to get this right Review and make dua to Allah, Allah will help you. But without any work, without repetition, you will forget. Right? Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Alhamdulillah.